Hello friends, this week on Heat Vision Breakdown we are joined by a very special guest, uh, the star of The Dark Knight, you've seen him in Blade Runner 2049, pretty much everything that everyone loves, David Dasmalchian, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks man, it's good to be here, thank you. All right, let's start off with your current project, which you wrote and are also starring in. It's called uh, All Creatures Here Below. This film has a little bit of mystery going on in it. What's sort of the premise of this film? So All Creatures Here Below, it's a story of these two people who are very much in love. Uh, they care very deeply for each other, but life has been incredibly cruel to them. And, and they're just living a hair's breadth away from abject poverty uh, in Los Angeles. And, and the day that my character, Jensen, loses his job, the partner in this in this couple, Ruby, played by the great Karen Gillan, mm -hmm. she kind of strikes out to take the thing that she feels like has always been denied them, which is a child. And my character, Jensen, takes the thing that he always feels has been denied them, which is some financial security. And they just both happen to make these really bad decisions at the same time on the same night. And uh, so they have to run and they go back to this place that they've been hiding from for a long time, which turns out to be where they're from, mm -hmm. which is Kansas. Um, where you're from. Which is also where yeah. I'm from. So if he can get back there and he can he can confront his demon, the monster that's been haunting him for so long, then he, he feels like they could start a new life together, you know? And these people, that's all they want. They just want a new life together and they'll sacrifice everything to get it. One of the first uh, introductions that the wider audience had to you was in uh, Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight in 2008. What was it like auditioning for Christopher Nolan, especially as an aspiring actor? It's like being asked that question, I get like nervous again. <laughs> like I saw you tense up. Oh, it was insane. I mean, it, you know, I've, I've been reading comic books my whole life and I've always thought that like the Joker was one of the coolest characters in literature, in mythology, in mm -hmm. our modern mythology, in the comics mythos. It, it was like everything I could have wanted. And and here I was, you know, a, um, a struggling actor in Chicago. I was doing awesome theater work and mm -hmm. I had barely enough money to pay the, the rent. And, um, but I'd never been on a film set before and I'd never gotten to do anything like that. And all of a sudden I was in this packed room of actors trying to audition for one of the bank robbers at the beginning of The Dark Knight. Mm -hmm. And, um, so that was my initial audition, was for a character, I think his name was Grumpy. Were you under a mask at that No, 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 oh. I just read for the the, the casting director, just right. in, you know, I, I wore like thuggish clothes or whatever, but uh, he said to me, I wanna bring you back tomorrow. I want you to meet somebody. It's really interesting what you're doing with this character, because as this comic lover mm -hmm. that I am, and as, uh, you know, someone that wanted to be a part of this so much, I had really thought out like who this, this little character was, and he was like, I really like what you're doing, but I just, I want you to do it with your eyes and not with your body or your voice so much. And that note, it just made perfect sense to me. And he said, Christopher Nolan really loves to see the story that people can tell with their eyes. So think about that when you come back and meet him tomorrow. And sure enough, the next day I was sitting as almost as close as I am to you, to him, in a little room, and he had a little handheld camcorder, <laughs> and he was having me do this scene of dialogue, which is fake dialogue, wasn't really part of a script. And um, we worked for five or 10 minutes together and then I was dismissed. I shook his hand, I thanked him, and I went back to doing Othello at Writer's Theater in Glencoe, Illinois. And and four months later, I got the call that I wow. was gonna be in The Dark Knight. <laughs> well, it worked out. It did. And it is a very, very memorable performance, Thank even you. though it's, it's not a huge part of the film, but everyone remembers that little scene that you're in. How do you make the most of your small amount of screen time when you have a smaller role like that? You know, I'm so grateful that I got so much time entrenched in the world of theater um, and collaborative ensemble acting when I was in Chicago. The other thing that has always propelled me is playing characters who are propelling the person who I'm doing a scene with. So I, I don't know how to describe it other than I get this incredible charge, this kick out of being in a scene with somebody where my character's behavior or the thing that I do is like a slingshot for whoever I'm in a scene with. And so when I was doing that scene with Harvey Dent, I was thinking like, this is everything. Because I knew the, I mean, I knew the inspiration material. There was a lot of long Halloween in there. Uh -huh. There was a lot of Harvey's like trajectory from the comics that, that I was familiar with. And I felt like, what an important moment to really try and tip this guy over the edge. So that that's kind of what I was, was thinking about. And I knew that me, David, the, the presence that I am, I'm not very 
strong and muscly and I'm not, <laughs> I mean, I might be intimidating like to my kids when I furrow my brow, but I'm just not the most intimidating guy. And so the idea that in the script, it's like Harvey gets in this ambulance and, and he's asking me, tell me what you know. I want to know about the Joker. And it's just, you know, my character is like mm -hmm. intimidatingly, you know, kind of smirks at him or something. And I was like, that's, that's not going to work. I need something that is going to, what would really terrify this guy? I was like, what if um, I just can't do anything but giggle? What would that do to like somebody? If, if, if I was asking you right now, like, you have to tell me, how are we going to save all the people in this building? What's the answer? And all you were doing was just looking at me with like a little giggle. Like, <laughs> and, then, and then there's a nice twist, because I didn't even know that there was going to be this other scene where you find out that my character had mental illness and that the character was like, I hadn't gotten to see a script. I didn't mm -hmm. know that was going to play out. And so that worked beautifully because I, I felt like once Batman Save, Batman saved me, think about that, it's crazy. But when Batman comes in to save me, he, he gives the breakdown of this, this character that I played and, and, and I thought, that's kind of wonderful because what if all along I was actually trying to tell Harvey the truth, but my mental illness was such that I, all that was coming out was just mm -hmm. laughter. It is unsettling, and it is intimidating, <laughs> so I think you nailed that. Thanks. Uh, well, now you get to be a uh, villain. You are going to be in the Suicide Squad with James Gunn, and you are playing a character called the Polka Dot Man, which I've never heard of. Are you familiar with the Polka Dot Man? Be honest. I'm, I'm to be completely <laughs> honest, I was not. No? Um, no, that was a very exciting morning this morning, too. To, to know that that is really happening. What do you know about the character at this point? Is there anything you share with us about it? That he has gone up against, uh, you know, the Cape Crusader. I know that. And I know <laughs> that uh, he has a really rad name. Um, the Polka Dot Man, I mean, come How on. How do you beat that? You ask for anything better than that. Mr. Polka Dot, I think sounds pretty cool. <laughs> um, but that's that's about that's about all I, I, I think I, no or can say, I guess. All right. I don't know. Playing it close to the vest, your yes. polka dotted vest. Yes, yes. But you also get to work with another fantastic director because you've worked with, I mean, the list is insane of the people that you've worked with. You've worked with Christopher Nolan, you've worked with Villeneuve, uh, Villeneuve. Uh, <laughs> so sorry, I'm so bad with names. I messed up your name, That's too, okay. by the way, it's in a, a past video, and I feel horrible no, about no, no. it. No, no, no. David Malchechian, Das, das <laughs> Malchian. Whew. The trick is this small chin, so this small chin. That's all you gotta remember. That when, is amazing. Yeah, this small chin, this small chin. Got it, now everybody knows. Yeah. Uh, but now you're working with James Gunn and James Gunn did Guardians of the Galaxy and now you're gonna be in a James Gunn movie and you're one of the leads in a James Gunn movie. Is it surreal for you to have worked with all of these amazing directors? That's massively surreal. <laughs> I've been so lucky, you know, when I moved to Los Angeles 2010, mm -hmm. I had three major career life goals that I always would put at the top of my you know, thing was obviously I wanted to keep working in the comic spectrum, and I wanted to work in in the realm of you know film adaptations of my favorite stories. But I put down work with the Muppets, <laughs> Bond villain, and work with David Lynch. Those were the three things that I have always that I always and I and I got to work with David Lynch a few years ago on his incredible return to Twin Peaks. Right. And when that happened, when that moment transpired, and I then sat back and thought about some of the greatest directors working in film today, I've gotten the opportunity to be on set with. And I was covetous of the idea of getting to be on a set with James Gunn. I think that that man understands so much about what makes these modern myths so effective and mm -hmm. powerful, what makes them work, the gears that turn. I mean, his imagination is an incredible place. I love the films that he's made. We just need a uh, Muppet Bond crossover for you to play the villain in that movie, and then that's check, like, check, check, you're good. The, we're, this is the Hollywood Reporter, right? Yeah, I will Hello, make. <laughs> Hollywood, like, report. Yeah. Uh, another huge project that you're in right now is uh, Villeneuve's Dune. Uh, remake, reboot, reimagining. It is, uh, yes, I would say all of the above. Okay. The, uh, I love David Lynch, Lynch but it's yeah. not the 1984 film. No, this is Denis' interpretation of the Frank Herbert novel, mm -hmm. Dune, which is a incredible book. I mean, the thing about Dune that makes it so, it's, it's, it's brilliant sci-fi. I mean, character development, the twists and the, the plot turns and the themes in it and some of the big ideas that mm -hmm. are at work in Dune are really fascinating to me as a reader, as an audience member. But one of the things that always blew my mind about the book Dune was that Herbert writes his characters in every kind of situation, every interaction between the characters from not just one or two 
levels of perspective. I feel like there's three, sometimes four levels of perspective. He really turns every interaction inside out and every character has so many levels to it. There's no 100% good guy, 100% mm -hmm. bad guy. It's, it's, it's a muddy world and it's a philosophically challenging world and it's all wrapped up in this incredible space adventure. And uh, the fact that Denis has invited me to be a part of his film, and I'm playing Peter DeVries, mm -hmm. who is this sadistic human computer who is so driven by an intention that is quite different than any character I've ever gotten to play before. Um, it's crazy, man. It's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, and Denis, he's a genius. I feel like he's our generation's Stanley Kubrick, ah. if you will. I feel like, because he, he works in so many different genres, and they're all masterpieces. I've never, I haven't, have yet to see a Denis Villeneuve film that didn't bowl me over. And working with him as an actor, I've gotten the honor of doing it twice now, um, is a really safe place to create. He lets you and encourages you to just go wherever you want to go, and he helps shape you and guide you, and um, it's like from another world. And what I did right to be so lucky that I get to, to do this. Well, you are a very nice man, so I feel like that helps. Well, <laughs> do you hear uh, that, Mom? Thank you, my mom. Uh, David Desmachian is the star of pretty much every project that anyone is excited about coming forward. <laughs> uh, but All Creatures Here Below, your latest project, is coming out on May 17th, so check that out. And just thank you so much, David, for coming by. Thank you. Absolutely. It was wonderful. Thanks.